Uh, I thought I'd uh, talk a little bit about how I work on book notes and specifically how I make uh, spaced repetition questions. So here's a book that I'm reading right now. I've only read about 5%, but I thought I'd start looking through the notes already. Uh, in this case, I imported using Readwise. And traditionally, so these are Kindle highlights. Um, Sometimes I also take uh, author notes, uh, either while walking and listening to a podcast, or even reading with other running and then talking myself through the book. So either way, I'll have a lot of these kind of notes that don't have a lot of structure to them. Traditionally, I would probably go in and actually start editing these notes directly, adding some headers, indenting, bolding, linking. But I think probably a better approach um, is to just open these um, highlights in the sidebar and then beginning to structure it myself because uh, that um, for example in this case I took notes from the introduction and he uh, talked about some things that he is expanding on in the first chapter and so uh, for my notes I want them to be focused on structure and not necessarily the way uh, that uh, the argument was presented linearly in the book. So I'm basically going through here um, adding to the structures, we have some main concepts, um, we have some thought perspectives, uh, and here's the highlights again. So these are just the same as I have opened in the sidebar. Now, um, what I like to do is to add these spaced repetition questions. You see, I also have a um, web browser open here. So what I'll typically do is I'll uh, whenever I come across a name that's relevant, I'll just shift click to open it in the sidebar. And then I might go here and go to Wikipedia or go to their homepage. Um, oftentimes I'll try to capture an image because that's uh, kind of neat. And um, I'll add a little bit of information about them. I'll link to other things that might be relevant. And then I'll often add spaced repetition questions because I really like building up a mental map of people in the field or in different fields. And so next time I come across David Christian, I would love to be able to connect that to um, other things that I've thought about. Um, so here's, for example, uh, Yanir Baryam. Um, and I might say, what does let's see, Yanir work on? So here I could just type the question, type the answer, but I could also block reference um, this thing. So of course I'm not expecting myself to memorize this definition, but I should be able to tell if I got it right or not. And here I could say who founded the New England Complex Systems Institute, but I'm not so interested in that yet that I want to really memorize that. So. Often I like to have, you know, here I have a question linked to his name. I would love to be able to look up his name, but there isn't anything here unique enough about him that I want to do that yet. For David Christian, I have a question who came up with the term big history. So that there I, I have this kind of two-way lookup, but I'll leave it like that. And then I'll make sure to close this bullet. And then I use control shift one to four. Um, depending on how far in the future I want to push it on the initial. So let's, I think I'll remember this tomorrow. Let's do a control shift three and it inserts the date it will appear. And then uh, these two pieces of data is just to keep track of how um, difficult it was to remember. And I'm using some custom CSS to make it look nice. And that's it. Um, so here we're talking about the scientific revolution. So I'm just seeing here. Uh, yeah, so as I'm going through, I can uh, start adding also content questions. So for example, what were the three scientific revolutions? And um, basically this is just using the date functionality uh, built into Rome to surface these. So if I go to uh, tomorrow, Let's see, so tomorrow is the 6th. We see here that there are a bunch of questions for me. 
Um, and this is how I used it for a long time, so you wouldn't really need anything more than this. Um, one problem here, two problems. One is that we, we get this entire uh, kind of cookie trail leading up to the question. And so oftentimes the answer will actually be revealed as part of the cookie trail. And also you only get the questions due on that specific day. You don't get, um, uh, if so if you miss a day, that question is basically lost. And so what I do now is I have a daily template. Uh, we're currently using Keyboard Maestro, but I'll probably switch that to a ROM42 template at some point or smart block. And here I have a query and I'm using the hashtag min all, which applies some custom CSS that removes that cookie trail. And secondly, I am doing a query uh, using between. So I'm finding all the old notes that the ones that are due earlier or today that are spaced repetition notes. And that looks like this. So here, for example, we see a question, uh, what were the three ways in which Jerome Bruner thought students might represent a task? And I remember that that's an active, um, an active iconic and symbolic. And here you see there is a um, block reference. So if I want to look more into this, uh, one thing I can do is I can open this block in the sidebar and then you have the whole, so you can go into task, task representation, you can go to his page. Here we have a picture and we have my notes. You see there's a bunch of other questions uh, on this page. Um, I can also just shift click on the name, which is why I like to, to hyperlink things even in, in these questions. And of course, they'll open the same page. Um, so I got this right and it was quite easy. So I'll do control shift four and it will shoot it from January 6th to January 11th. And of course, how far it shoots it depends on how many times you repeated it and uh, how easy it is. Um, so I've got some, some questions here about Trump Piaget. These are actually way overdue, as you see. So these are July 10th, and this is because I had a big break and I have some questions that I haven't I actually forgot them. So I need to go back and study them. So they'll be here until I, I do them. Um, here's some other stuff. I'm actually um, experimenting with um, scheduling some paragraphs that I want to read. Uh, so this is just a paragraph from a, uh, from a, from a paper. Um, I'm not sure if this is a good idea yet, but I'm uh, experimenting with it. Um, when did the agricultural revolution begin? Well, uh, according to Sapiens, it was 9,500 years ago. Yep. So let's do that one and so on. So that's how I do um, spaced repetition in Rome and uh, how I work with my book notes.